Hello, and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this screencast we're going to make a Daleks game clone. Daleks is a game where you have multiple monsters chasing after you, and you have to try to get them to crash into each other before they catch you. And so in this case the monsters are all bats, and I also have a teleport button that only works every five seconds, and then I have to let it cool down so that I can teleport away again. And I also have a shield that I can use that only lasts for one second that I can use to fight back at the last bat. So let's see how this game is put together. Click on the create button to start up the editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename this cat sprite to something a bit more descriptive than sprite one. How about cat? And this sprite is way too big so I'm going to click on the shrink tool up here and then click on the cat sprite several times to shrink them down to about that size. So there are several parts to this game. Um, let's start with the first one where we just try to add code where we can move the cat up, down, and left and right. So for that we'll go to the brown events category and get the when green flag clicked block and then have it enter into a forever loop where inside this forever loop we're constantly going to be checking if the left, right, up, or down arrow keys are being pressed. So I'm going to need four of these if blocks from the orange control section. And then from the light blue sensing category, I'm going to get this key pressed block and put it inside each of the if blocks. And we'll just set this to one to right arrow and one to left and one to up, and the fourth one to down. So in the right left arrow we're going to want to change the X position of the cat, so let's go to the dark blue motion category and grab this change X by block. We don't want the set X, but rather get the change X. We'll put one for the right arrow and one for the left arrow. And so when we go to the right we're going to actually change this by six. And going to the left, we need to subtract 6, so we want to change the x position by negative 6. And then for the up and down case, we want to grab that change y by block. And similarly, set this to 6, but going down, we need to subtract 6, so change y by negative 6. And then let's go ahead and go to the look section. The cat sprite that we start off with comes with two costumes that you can see by clicking on the costumes tab, and if we move back and forth between these costumes, sort of look like the cat's walking. So we want our program to do that, and we can do that in the purple look section with next costume. Go ahead and grab a next costume block and put it inside each of the if blocks. Okay, let's test this out. So I hit the green flag to start our program. And I can use the arrow keys to move the cat around. There are a couple things that are a little weird with this. One, the cat's walking backwards when we move to the left, and also the cat doesn't seem to animate its walking whenever we move diagonally. So I'll click on the red stop button to stop the program, go to the motion category, and pick up this block called point and direction, and we'll put one at the start of the right arrow and left arrow cases. We don't need any for the up and down arrows. So for the right arrow, we want it we want the sprite to point to the right, so select 90 degrees the right direction. And then left arrow, we'll set that to negative 90 degrees the left direction. And I'll click on the green flag to start this program. And oh, that's kind of weird. The reason that's happening is if you open up the info panel, if we change the direction, whenever the cat's facing 90 degrees to the right, it's upright. But as it rotates around to face 90 degrees to the left, or at negative 90 degrees, you can see the cat's upside down. We can fix that by setting the rotation style of the sprite. And we can do that here, but let's also do it at the start of the program. We can do that towards the bottom. There's a set rotation style block. and Let's put that underneath when green flag is clicked, but above the forever loop. And while we're here, let's have the cat always start off facing towards the right and have the cat start at a random place on the screen. So grab this go to x y block and we'll set this to a random x and a random y position. So go to the green operator section we can get this pick random number block 
we'll put two of them into that go to XY. You can see down here the X and Y position of the mouse cursor is displayed by the numbers here. So you can see that the maximum X coordinate is 240, and the smallest one at the very left is negative 240, and Y goes from 180 to negative 180. So we're going to pick a random number for X somewhere between negative 240 and 240, and Y can be a random number from negative 180 to 180. Let's try this out. Yeah, that's working out pretty nice. We still have that weird problem of whenever we move diagonally, the cat sprite doesn't animate. And the reason that's happening is because when we hold down, say, the right arrow and the up arrow, two next costume blocks are being execute, executed. And so that's changing the costume twice. So it goes to the other costume, but then back to the original costume. So it doesn't actually show any change whatsoever. What we're going to have to do is only execute the next costume blocks in the up arrow and down arrow if blocks some, uh, some of the times, only if right and left arrow aren't being held down also. So we can do that by adding an if block that we put this next costume inside of. And the condition for this if block is only going to be if the left arrow or the right arrow are not being held down. So we'll go to the operator section grab this not block, and then put the or block inside there, and then go back to the light blue sensing category and grab that key pressed block. We'll need one for each of the or sockets. We'll change this to right arrow and left arrow. And I'll duplicate that for the down arrow direction also. So this way if we're holding down both right and up, this next costume block will execute, but this next costume block won't because the right arrow is being held down. And this block only executes if the right arrow or the left arrow block are not being pressed. So let's, let's test this out. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So the next thing we'll do, we'll have three variables that we need to add. So click on the orange data section and click on this make a variable. Now we're just going to make the variables right here at the start and I'll explain what they do as we start programming this game some more. But the first variable will be called teleport and it'll be for all sprites. All of these three variables will be for all sprites. So click OK and we'll make another variable called game over. And the third variable will be named shield. And we're going to have to set the values of these variables to something at the very start of the game. So grab three of those set variable two blocks. We'll set teleport to zero. And we'll set game over to false. And then we'll set shield to zero. So let's add the code for teleporting the cat. This will be pretty simple. I'll just move this code over here, and in the brown event section, we'll have the teleport activate when the user presses the T key. So I'll set that to T. This is actually pretty easy. I'm just going to temporarily disconnect this code so I can duplicate this go to X, Y block that moves the cat somewhere randomly. And that's basically all we need. But if we run the program and test this out, you can see I can press T and teleport all over the place. I don't have any control where I'm teleporting, but it just gets me out of my current position. But the problem is we don't want the player to be able to teleport all the time as fast as this, say. So we're going to add a short cooldown period after the player teleports. And we're going to say that player can only teleport when the teleport variable is equal to zero. So go to the orange control section get an if block, put that teleport code inside there, and we're going to say if teleport is equal to zero. And then right after teleporting, we're going to go ahead and set the teleport variable to five.
And after doing that, we'll wait one second and then decrease teleport by one. And we'll do that five times so that it'll eventually become set to zero again after five seconds. So I'll just get this repeat block so that we don't have to duplicate those wait and change teleport variable blocks over and over again. I'll just say repeat five and we'll wait one second before changing the teleport variable by minus one to subtract it by one. So you can see if the teleport variable is set to five or some other number besides zero, then it's not going to execute the teleport code when I press the T key. So let's test this out. I'll click the green flag and teleport is equal to zero right now. So I can press T and teleport around, but pressing T before teleport equals zero again will have no effect. Now let's create a shield for the cat and we're gonna have to draw a new sprite. So click on the paint new sprite button. We'll go to vector mode and this sprite will be pretty easy. We'll just make a light blue circle. Yeah, maybe make it a little bit thicker than normal. And we can just draw a simple oval like that. We'll need this circle to be just a little bit bigger than the cat, so maybe shrink this down a little bit. That's a pretty good size. And try to get the uh, green circle that's the center of the oval over the crosshair that's the center of the sprite. And we can name this sprite Shield. So we'll have the cat code activate the shield whenever the player presses the S button. So we'll grab this one key pressed block and set it to S. The code will be very similar, so I'll go to control and grab an if block. And we'll have if shield is equal to zero. And when the shield is activated, we'll set the shield variable to on. And then we'll wait one second so that the shield variable is set to on for just one second. And then we'll set the shield variable to 10. And then have a countdown that's similar to the code in teleport. In fact, I'll just duplicate that repeat loop, except we'll have to repeat it 10 times. And we're decreasing the shield variable by one. So as far as having the shield show up around the cat and rotating itself like we had at the start of this screencast, we'll go to the shield code and there's just a few things that we want this to do. So when the green flag is first clicked, we want the shield to hide itself because it's not active at the very start of the game. Then the shield code will enter inside this forever loop and inside this forever loop we're constantly checking if the shield variable is set to on or if it's set to something else. If it's set to on, we want the shield to show itself. So if shield is equal to on, then we want the shield to show itself. So go to the purple looks section and grab that show block. And that'll make the shield show up. Otherwise, if shield isn't set to on, we want to hide it. And meanwhile, inside that forever loop, we'll also have the shield constantly updating its current position to where the cat is. So We'll add this go to cat block and then also grab this turn to the right 15 degrees block. So even if it's hidden, the shield is still following the cat around and rotating. So let's try this out. I'll click on the green flag and I'll press S to activate the shield. You can see shield is set to on and then it gets set to 10 and then we've entered inside that loop, which is waiting one second and then changing shield by negative one. And once it's back to zero, I can activate the shield again. But notice that if I press S before shield is zero, then this code inside this if block is never executed. So let's start creating the bad guys in this. So click on choose a sprite from library. And we'll select bat two and click OK. That's really big. So I'm going to shrink that bat down by clicking on the shrink tool and then clicking on the bat sprite. And I'm going to add all the code for this one bat and then simply duplicate the sprite 
after I've added all the code. That way the code will be duplicated also, and I won't have to keep making the code. And I won't have to keep adding the code blocks for each bat. So first, let's go ahead and set this to bat1 as the name, and give it a left-right rotation style. Next, in the brown events section, we're going to get this when green flag is clicked, and then a forever loop from the orange control section. And we'll have this loop just take care of animating the bat. The bat comes with two costumes, just like the uh, cat sprite does. So if we animate back and forth between those two costumes, we can make it look like the bat is flapping its wings. So all we need is the purple look categories uh, next costume block. Ooh, that is really fast. So let's add a short delay there so the flapping isn't that fast. In the orange control section, we can get this wait one second block, but one second is too slow. Let's just change it to 0 0.1. Yeah, that's a lot better. And then let's have another forever loop and a when green flag clicked block. And this will be for the main behavior of the bat that moves towards the cat and also checks if it's colliding with other bats or with the shield or with the cat. So first things first, let's have the cats with, <laughs> I'm going to be messing bat and cat up for this entire screencast. So <laughs> hold on for the bat. We want the bat to start at a random position somewhere on the stage. So let's grab that go to X, Y block and then go to the green operator section and get two of these pick random blocks. And just like we did for the cat and the teleporting, we'll have this go from an X of negative 240 to 240 and a Y of negative 160 to, oh, I'm sorry, negative 180 to 180. And also, whenever these bats die during a game, they'll hide themselves. So at the start of the next game, we want them to show themselves. So in the purple looks category, grab that show block and also have it above the forever loop. And we don't want the bat to instantly kill the cat just in case they happen to start at the same location. So we're going to enter a two second delay to give the cat a head, head start. And that'll be before the bat starts moving around with the code inside the forever loop. So the code that moves the bat towards the cat, hey, you got it right that time, is just going to be pointing towards the cat and then moving in that direction. So grab the point towards block and click on the black triangle to set it to cat. And then put a move 10 steps block there, but 10 steps is way too fast. Let's have this just take three steps. Now there are three things that we want to check. The first thing we want the bat to check for inside this forever loop is if it's touching another bat. So we can do that by seeing if it's touching the black color of another bat. But we also have to be careful because the cat also has a black color. So we're going to need an if block that, that checks for two different conditions. First, the bat has to be touching the black color of a different bat, but also not touching the cat. So in order to get the opposite of touching cat, we need this not block from the green operators category. So we can say if not touching. So both of these have to be true before we cause the bat to die. So let's grab this and block. So the condition is if touching the black color and not touching the cat. Then we want this bat to hide itself and then stop its scripts. So let's go to the purple looks category and get this hide block. And then in the orange control section, grab this stop all block. We don't want to stop the entire program. We just want to stop the other scripts in this sprite, which is this flapping animation script. And then also we want a second stop block to stop this script that we're going to add these blocks to. So let's combine those together and then add them right there. So the next thing that we want to check is if the bat is touching the shield, that blue shield that's showing up. So let's grab another if block and in the light blue sensing category, 
if it's touching the shield. And it can only be touching the shield if the shield is showing itself. So as long as the shield is hidden, it won't be able to touch the bat. And in this case, we also want the bat to die. So we'll need these exact same blocks. So go ahead and right click on that hide block at the top and select duplicate to get those same blocks and then stick them into the second if block. And then the third if, we'll check to see if it's touching the cat. So go to the orange control section to grab another if block. And then in the light blue sen sensing category, we'll grab this touching block and see if it's touching the cat. But that's not all. We also want to check to see if the game over variable is equal to false. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So let's take that out. Let's go to the operator section. And if game over equals false. We want both of those things to have to be true, so let's grab that AND block. So if touching cat and game over is equal to false, then we'll execute this code. And the code that causes the cat to realize that it's being eaten by a bat, we'll just have this bat sprite broadcast a message. So let's go to the brown events category and get this broadcast block. And the message we'll broadcast will be a new message. So when you click on the black triangle, click on new message. And the message will be game over. And now that we have the bat sprite broadcasting this game over message, we can have the cat sprite handle that message. So let's click on the cat sprite. And then scroll down here. We'll need to add this when I receive message block and set the message to game over. So in that case, we'll want to set the game over variable to true. So grab this set block from the orange data section. Set game over to true. And then we'll just have the cat start spinning around wildly while it says, oh no. First, we're going to have to undo that left right rotation style by going to the dark blue motion category and set the rotation style to all around. And this will let us actually have the cat spin around instead of just facing to the left or to the right. So in the purple looks category, you can grab this say hello block, but we'll have the cat say, oh no. And then the cat can just spin around a whole bunch. So we'll go to the orange control section and grab this repeat and put a turn to the right block inside that repeat. And let's have it repeat, I don't know, 30 times. And make that a really fast turn, so maybe 34 degrees. And after it spins around saying, oh no, then we'll have this cat sprite shut down the entire program. So go to the control category and grab stop all and put that after the repeat. So we can test this out. So go ahead and click on the green flag. You can see the cat, the bat is giving the cat a uh, two second heads up there at the start. And oh, if the bat touches the cat, the cat says, oh no, and spins around a whole bunch and then stops the entire program. We can also test out that shield and see if that kills the bat. Oh, nice. So at this point, we can just duplicate all the bats. Let's say, uh, maybe make six bats total. So I'll keep right clicking on the bat sprite and selecting duplicate. And each bat has identical code where all they do is check to see if they're, after pointing towards the cat and moving towards it, no matter where they are, they're all going to pick a different random location at the start to begin. And then if they're touching the black color, which they'll be doing if they're touching a bat, but also not touching the cat, because the cat also has a little bit of black on its sprite, then we'll simulate the bat dying by disappearing and stopping. We'll do the same thing if the bat is touching the shield, and if any of these bats are touching the cat, well game over equals false, then we'll have the cat die by broadcasting this game over message that the cat handles. Oh, and one thing is, we don't want the cat to be able to move around after the game has ended. As you can see, I can actually keep walking even after the bat has hit the cat. So we actually need to disable the player from walking around, and we can do that by and taking all this code out of that forever loop and putting one if block in there that says if game over is equal to false. So if the game isn't over, then we do want 
the player to be able to press the right and left arrow key and move the cat around. So we'll grab this equal sign from the green operator section. Uh, if game over is equal to false, that is if the game isn't over yet, then we'll be able to move around. Yeah, and you can see uh, the cat gets frozen in place except for that spinning around. The cat can't keep moving by having the player press the arrow keys. So that's the entire game, and we also noticed that some of the bats disappeared when they touched each other. That's pretty good, so we need to get these bats to crash into each other without getting eaten. We can use the teleport as an emergency escape. Once the bat is down to just one, I can activate the shield and slay it. So that's the entire program. So we've seen how we can use the teleport and shield variables to add a cooldown period. And also, we don't have to only use broadcast to have sprites communicate with one another. We can also have one sprite set a variable that the other sprite is also reading all the time, like we do with the shield variable. The cat sets shield to on when the shield is activated, and then after a second sets it back to 10. And shield knows to show itself or hide itself if shield is equal to on or some other value. And also we saw how we can just create all the code for a single monster and then duplicate that monster's sprite to create several different monsters on the screen. That's pretty good. And I can shield away this... Oh, that shield only lasted one second. Okay, so I hope you found this screencast to be helpful. I'm Al Swigert, and this is the Invent with Scratch screencast. You can find more screencasts at inventwithscratch.com. Thanks for watching.